YouTube, what's up? I recently traded the first infinity I made in D2R for a pair of dual mosaic. Because I'm non-ladder, I cannot make this yet until the next season. This build is so strong, it breaks the game for me. It makes it seem pretty silly for me to want to play my fire druid, for example. The damage this build does is exponentially higher than every other class. The claws I have are not even min-max and don't have any good plus to skills on them other than utility. I will go over the gear in the merc setup, the stats and the skill points used, as well as my button mapping, and then I will finish with some P8 Chaos Sanctuary, P8 Cows, and P8 Bale. Timestamps and links will be in the description below. All right, so let's go over the build. You definitely need dual mosaics. This is That's the only thing that makes this thing work. So these were the ones I traded for. They're pretty low level and basic, but I'll tell you why it's not that important. Um, so these ones rolled 10 to cold, 14 to lightning, and 10 to fire. They have seven life leech, increased attack speed, and plus two to martial arts. The extra skills on them is one to death sentry, one to Mind Blast, and one to Lightning Sentry. One to Mind Blast is important here. And then for my other one, 15 to Cold, 14 to Light, and 12 to Fire, plus three to Fade. So I don't have to put any points into Fade. Using Griffin's Eye with a 5-5 Facet in it for plus 17 and minus 23. 30 All Resmaras, Enigma, Raven Frost with 20 Dex and Cannot Be Frozen is very important, plus the almost perfect 249 attack rating. Arachnid's Mesh and a BK ring for extra life and the plus one to skills, plus the five life leech. Now this is where my build differs from a, a lot of players. So I'm using Trangs for the faster cast rate so that I hit the 65 breakpoint from this Griffin's Eye and Arachnid's Mesh. Plus it gives me plus 32 cold resistance. Using Sandstorm Trex for the faster hit recovery, 15 to vitality and the 67 to poison resist. Now I understand that these boots are not the highest damage. You can, you want Myrmidon Greaves for the highest kick damage but i felt like again up to p8 this was really no problem again if you're trying to min max you might want to change up the boots but i decided to go for quality of life with the res the poison res max on swap i have a 654 cta and a f spirit monarch for a torch i'm using a 1918 torch a 2019 10 annie and then i have martial arts skillers all martial arts skillers with different mods on them. So this is seven faster run walk, which is important. The other one was 20 to life, 42 to life, 15 to life, 15 to life, 14 to life, max damage and poison damage. For my small charms, I have a five all res, lightning resist 11, lightning resist 11, 20 life, lightning resist 11, faster hit recovery, 11 light res, faster hit recovery, 10 light res. So this is important because it hits the 27 breakpoint. 10 to light res, faster run walk, and 11 light res, faster run walk, and 11 poison res. So this gets me to max on lightning, max on poison. Cold is not so important because of the raven frost and you're doing absorb. And then fire isn't important because of my mercenary setup, which he's using a flickering flame. So the strength, I didn't invest a single point into strength and then all my points went into vitality. For my mercenary setup, using a flickering flame. So flickering flame for giving me max fire res, which I think, again, is overkill on this build because you're barely getting touched. Chains of Honor for the plus two skills, the eight life leech. So this is the only source of life leech on the mercenary and the 65 alt res. Using infinity and a man catcher, man catcher for the fastest attack speed so that he's leeching more often. And then I picked a defiance mark for this because I'm often standing still while I'm building up my charges. So I wanted the highest defense so that I could just tank while I build up my charges. So here's where the build differs from a lot. So one point into Dragon Talon, I have 20 points into Tiger Strike, one point into Cobra Strike, 20 points into Phoenix Strike, 20 points into Blades of Ice, 20 points into Claws of Thunder, and then I put my remaining points, which is only five points into Fist of Fire. The reason why is if you go above skill level 33, so if you have a skill level on this, of 34 or higher, you will not be able to do Life Leech from Cobra Strike because it converts all of your physical damage into fire damage. And if you're not doing physical damage, then you cannot leech from it. So I decided on getting basically one point into this. I just put the extra points I had into it so that I could have that quality of life of getting life back from Cobra Strike. And on my build, I run all six charges all charges at level three for the shadow one point into claw mastery one point into weapon block weapon block is important because this will block physical and spells so as you so for like tanking souls for example you can tank soul lightning and some lightning damage as long as you are standing still and when you are attacking that's considered standing still so when you're building up your charges having weapon block in addition to defiance helps you build your charges without any sort of risk of of death even even up to p8 so this is a very good 
good one point wonder you can also put in some extra points in here if you wanted no points into fade i actually don't use fade but it's just nice to have it in case i do need it the one point into mind blast is from the claw and I use Mind Blast in certain situations to maintain your charges. And then this is where I differ. I've sort of maxed Burst of Speed. I only have 18 points into it, but the reason for only 18 points is because the additional two points that you would get does not increase your attack speed or your run walk speed really all that much. I think the run speed is like for three or four levels, it's 65. So it wasn't a big deal to not completely max this. And this is a level 96 assassin. So there isn't many points left to do. So if I were to get a few more levels, I would maybe put it into burst of speed or maybe put it into fist of fire to get that extra synergy for Phoenix strike. But it's not that important. So this is where the spice comes in from this build. So it is using a lot of different skills. So this is how I do my button mapping. So my main charge up is Phoenix Strike and Claws of Thunder. So I have those mapped to circle and square. And then on my alternate, which is my L2, I have my two Fists of Fire and my Blades of Ice. So they're basically using the same buttons, but then you hold the L2 to get the alternate. And then also holding L2, I charge up for R1 and R2, which is Tiger Strike and Cobra Strike. So that's how I get all six charges in for my button mapping. I'm using X, which is a main button for my unleashing. And that's also like your main button for like opening stuff and, and interacting with things. So that is my main. So that's X for my pre-buffs. So this is like kind of pre-buff things. Uh, I have R1 and R2 for these two, just to like get some extra burst of speed right off the bat. But what you want to do is on swap, on swap I have burst of speed because it goes up to level 32, 33 with battle orders. And then I have my battle orders mapped to R1 and R2 on swap. Yeah, so the reason for that is this is how you can get up to 24 skills on your controller. Weapon swap separate skill buttons. So this means by default, this is off. You would have the option to map six buttons on your main and then six buttons when you're holding the L2 and you have your alternate. That would be it. If you select this option, then when you swap weapons, for example, when you swap to your CTA, you can have an entirely new map of buttons. So you could have 12 additional ones on your weapon swap. So for example, I only need battle orders when I'm wearing CTA or when I have CTA. So that's why you want this option on. So it saves you some button mapping right there. So that's the key. All right, so I pre-buff here. And then I stand here and get all my charges. P8 actually helps to get all your charges because it takes longer to kill the monsters, so you can charge it up quicker. Or not quicker, but easier. So again, because i am uh, got a Defiance Merc and Weapon Block, it's very hard to kill me while I'm standing still and attacking. So once I've got all my charges, you can see I'm using all six charges. I can just kick through almost everything. Player's eight. The changes to next hit delay... Make it so that all the Novas hit, all the damage stacks on top of each other now. So 65 faster cast rate makes it good for teleporting around. Speeds are pretty good, but then the burst of speed for making the small adjustments to run and kick. Just a better quality of life. I did try fade and I, it just it worked too slow. I had monsters running away from me. It made it harder to kick, so... Having the faster attack speed, as well as run speed, is... Nice quality of life. Now this is, again, not using any Sunder Charms. Because you're doing... Fire, cold, lightning, and physical damage.
So for this last seal, this is where I use Mind Blast. So I use Mind Blast to convert a couple of these monsters before I take out. And then I have one monster left here to maintain my charges to bring to Diablo. So Diablo Players 8 is basically two shots. So here we're going to do a Players 8 cows. Now I'm just going to join the cow run as is. So I'm just going to jump in. Buff up. Burst of speed. And then here's a bunch of cows to stack my charges. You can see the other guy has got some traps. So once I have my charges up, here I finish off Tiger Strike and Cobra Strike for that life leech. And now I'm just kicking cows. All the damage just stacks. So it rips. I have a feeling these people did not probably enjoy me entering their cow game. Because they're nowhere near me and I'm just taking out all the cows. I'm basically teleporting to the cow pack, taking it out, and I kind of get first dibs on all the drops here. So the charge 3 Phoenix Strike is that the ice that uh, freezes them. It like loops around and freezes. Small charm. Grand charm. Yeah, so I'm able to pick up all this stuff because I'm just front running this thing. This is why I like burst of speed in this build because you can just run real fast, kick real fast. And because everything's frozen, like nothing is like a big threat. With Cobra Strike, you get the mana and life back so your mana and life pool are pretty topped off so yeah that was it pretty quick cow loop so here is players 8 Bail run. So I enter the throne room. I already have my charges up, but I just kick a couple times beforehand just to keep my charges up, and then I clear the throne room. I'll buff up again. Running the six charges. Charges will last between the bail waves unless hydras go down. So they got Hydras down, so I'm gonna have to leave the throne room and kick a bunch of times just to maintain the charges and then come back. So 
So I use the TP method. So you drop a TP, and then you go outside the throne room to maintain your charges. Dropping the TP there will prevent Bale from laughing again, so that when you enter the room, he'll just walk right in to the throne, to the chamber. So that's where you, you carry your charges, and then you just kick Bale. Now, P8 Bale is extremely tanky. He's got a lot of life. So for that to go down that quick shows you how strong it is. So yeah, that's it. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to do so below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.